wedding, one of the most complicated days of your life. <laughs> the day itself might actually be, I don't know, not that complicated, I don't know. But I have a few friends who have gotten married this year, and it just seems like such a logistical pain in the ass. <laughs> and today's video has a bunch to do with that. So I was gonna show this whole thing by someone I know. It seems like it gets into a bunch of complicated angles. I'm gonna try and cover this in a way that like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna send hate to anyone. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at this and just see what's what's happening. So this is the original video by She's Daddy. I love reading internet usernames. Good part of this job. And this is kind of what kicked this whole uh, online debacle. Scammed by wedding dress designer out of $700. So I'm going through possibly the worst situation that any bride whose wedding is a month out could be going through. I reached out to a dress designer as of over a year ago at this point and connected with her, let her know that I had interest in her designing my dress. I actually found her here on TikTok. She makes incredible pieces. They're handmade corset. She's super, super talented. I was really excited to be working with her. Oh no, everything's good. Good designer, good designs. Everything's good, and I think everything's gonna turn out to be good for the rest of this uh, story. And we finalized the detail as of April. I paid for my initial deposit, which was $700 on her website. I let her know my timeline was really ideally July, or early July. So the timeline is early July, ideally. That's that's ideally the point for this. And this thing, if we, we have a timeline in mind, and possibly on the screen, if editor wants to do it. Unless editor is too tired. <laughs> <laughs> they finalized the design in April. This is when the deposit got paid and the agreed on delivery date as she's gonna state here is possible between April to July based on her schedule and the amount of clients that she was working. And I was willing to compromise. I told her last week of July would be able to work well for me. She said that last week of July is essentially the agreed upon delivery date. Even though before that would be ideal, that's kind of the timeline that, that they were talking about. And really, really pushing it, like the possible last date it could be sent to me would be August 1st. Or the possible last date, August 1st. If the editor is doing this, this is all on this timeline that's on the screen as I'm saying these words right now. The last update that she actually reached out to me proactively was on July 19th. We confirmed the price of the veil. We confirmed the price of the remaining that I had to pay for the dress. And I didn't hear a single word from her until I reached out proactively the first week of August, actually after our deadline. So they said, if the timeline's on the screen again, first of August by the latest, according to her, we're gonna hear the other side of this uh, later on, as, as you heard the, the other person is on TikTok too. So this is already, according to her, a bit late. She let me know, even though we talked about this back in July, on August 4th, three days after our August 1st, like maximum, beyond maximum deadline, like we're getting into the red zone here as I leave for my wedding on September 6th. She let me- That's scary. <laughs> Dude, wedding stuff is scary. And that being last minute, that is, Ooh, seems like a lot of pressure. I've never ordered a wedding dress though, so I, I don't know. At this point, I'm out $700 and I'm freaking out. I'm having a really hard time sleeping. And I asked for photos of their current progress and I never received any photos. I repeatedly asked for them. And then I was told last Monday, a day later, August 5th, that she did not have time to complete my veil, even though we initially started speaking back last year and we confirmed and I started paying the deposit for everything early April. So a few weeks before the wedding, September, I remember her saying for the wedding, she's being told that she won't be able to complete this thing in time. She's made some of the bits, but not all of them in time. At this point, we're a month away from my wedding. I'm gonna be out of town this week. So even if she sent it tomorrow, I'm likely not receiving it considering it's coming from Austin. Now the last bit we need to hear about is about the corset. We gotta get all this information in before we understand what in God's name happened with this goddamn wedding dress. I basically said, hey, listen, you can keep the money. I'd like the corset that I paid for. She prices her, her corsets on her website at around $700 because they're custom made and take a lot of time to do. So, just, so she just wants a corset. The corset costs the same as the deposit, $700. Told her, hey, I'd let you keep this money. Please just send me the corset. They absolutely refused to do so until I paid the remaining fee for the dress. They claimed they cut the fabric. I didn't see any photos or evidence of said cut fabric. 
We are well over my due date for when this dress was supposed to be in my hand and on my person by. So she claims that because, because she canceled the order because she thought that she won't get the dress in time for her wedding, but because the, the act of canceling the order, they refused to give her the money back. Even though there was no dress, they wanted the full money for the full dress just for the corset. So that's video number one. She's daddy. <laughs> do, do I have to call her that? Th throughout the video. It also says that her name is Blank Slots. Let's call her Blank Slots. Let's, let's use that one. Blank Slots ended up tagging the business down in the description. The comments seem quite supportive. So sorry this happened to you. Oh, this is a business. We just dropped our bridal collection and would love to gift you one for your big day. You gave her only four months to make the final dress. AI profile picture, so that's interesting. A custom wedding dress in three to four months is crazy, but she should have told you that. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know the timelines for these sort of things, but if it is crazy, that is that is her job to let a client know that that's unrealistic. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Did you see her sister's video? Well, we are we we are gonna see it. So this is a little update. She reached out to me actually after seeing the videos and let me know that she'd be happy to refund me if I canceled the chargeback as well as deleted the video. I didn't feel good about canceling the chargeback, so I reached out to my credit card company, asked them what that process looked like, and they basically let me know if you cancel, we cannot reopen the case. So have her refund the money and then the chargeback will be obviously canceled because it would have been resolved. That makes sense. She sent me a couple of screenshots basically saying her system didn't allow her to give me money if there's an open chargeback. But the person that I spoke to specifically at my credit card company told me their system should not be impacted by the chargeback and they should be able to still refund you. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I don't know anything about credit cards. And then the wedding dress place. I've been avoiding saying Everyone, the name of the wedding dress place because it's... Against. Let's give this a real shot. Ma corsetière. Does that sound good? Ma corsetière. Ma corsetière. I feel pretty good about this last one. So MC, which is how I'm gonna call the wedding dress place from here on out, uh, responded with this video. Because we had been speaking for quite a long time now, I wanted to honor that. And you can see in the messages between us. So let's see what she's saying here. What is your wedding? If you wanted a skirt, I am comfortable making the timeline. Would be the same. I can pretty much do anything. Since we already did a mock-up corset, I'm very confident it would be to your liking. My wedding is in September, but I'm leaving the country in the first week of September, which I guess that's kind of the problem with the late August, early September delivery kind of timeline. I'd be totally fine with sourcing this and the skirt elsewhere, but my main priority is having time to do that, which it sounds like no matter what I want, your timing is still completion into August. Is this right? So she was just asking if August is actually the deadline. So in April, she said, hey, so sorry, since this is my personal sell. Sometimes I do not check all my messages often. No matter the design of the corset, the timeline would be around the beginning of August at the moment. Referring to this message, she says, not annoying at all, of course. I apologize for the delayed replies. That's so sad to hear. Okay, I understand. I think I'll have to just find some other options for my wedding dress then. We later agreed on a full gown costume design to be done in the time frame instead of a more difficult tool gown. So they did agree for it to be done until that early August timeline. And came up with this unique sketch. And this was the gown that was in production when she canceled her order on August 9th. We agreed upon an estimated delivery date of around the beginning of August and all of that was fully transparent to her the entire time. So August 9th she cancelled it which is already tethering I'd say on, on mid-August maybe. The gown was in production in early August and late July. She never went over 12 hours without receiving a reply back from us. So on August 4th a person from the last video something daddy <laughs> I forgot the other name says hey wanted to follow up on progress feel free to have something follow up but just wanted to check back in so I can start to look for shoes thanks the corset is finished and I will be finishing the skirts within the next week and shipped out amazing yay so excited to see everything and try it all on she asked for an update we updated her I told her that the full garment would be finished within the next week and it would be shipped out to her we had a phone call from her request on the 8th of August and she did express concern of how the wedding was truly stressing her out which we completely understood. We agreed upon having final photos sent to her on Saturday. The dress was then planned by me to be sent out Monday morning for a Tuesday express delivery date. On that Friday 
This is when we received this unexpected text message. So this is the unexpected text message. Hey, you two, I wanted to reach out because I'm really uncomfortable with what's happening with this stress situation and the fact that it hasn't been started until this week. I'm really upset that I haven't had any photos sent to me just yet, and I think it would be best to terminate our relationship. I know you put time and effort into this, and I don't expect a refund, but I will take the course set top when it's completed, and that'll be the end of this. So when she's saying, I don't expect a refund, it's... I'm assuming on the $700 deposit. I wanted to give her a chance because we had been speaking so long and just four days ago, she had been sending me hearts and smiley faces and she was so excited. And I wanted to double check with her that she understood that if she cancels the gown, she, she has to afford the repercussions, unfortunately. Responsible in payment in full um, to the company for the release. So she says that the repercussions being that she needs to pay for the full price of the dress. The garment does remain the possession of my corsetier until the payment is received in full. She then goes and tries to barter with us and unfortunately say that she is entitled to a full refund or entitled to um, her corset top being released um, and she doesn't need to pay for the skirt. She doesn't need to do anything further. She wants to terminate our business relationship, AKA cancel her gown, but still have the corset sent to her. Because the, that's the only thing that's finished at this point. This was a one of one gown. And once it is canceled, all deposits are non-refundable, just like anything that is made to order in the entire world. So, okay, that's kind of the gist of this whole video. Let's see what people are saying. Early August means before the 10th or cancellation on the 9th because he hadn't even finished his skirt is absolutely valid. You should have told her in April, you could not meet her timeline period. And this person's asking, so are you making the dress in a week, basically? Was she supposed to push back her wedding date because he didn't start working on the dress until the delivery date? I'm confused. Yeah, that is a bit confusing. <laughs> Let's, the timeline's on the screen again. I'm putting the timeline back on the screen. She started working on this during the week that the delivery date was due. This is like me with my sponsor deals. I haven't really done a sponsor in a little while, but that's, you know, just really pushing it to the... <laughs> Whenever you see a YouTuber post a, a video on, on the 30th of a month, just know that that day was probably pretty stressful. I do get what she's saying where like the bride was, I guess, being quite nice in the messages and sending positive vibes. But also that could be like attested to just, I don't know, being like kind of trying to be nice and professional. And it's not really something that she was hiding. She said that that's what she was doing in the original video. So I don't know. Then things got a little bit crazy. <laughs> things like went into a direction that you might not really expect. So this person, this came out before. This came out before the wedding video. People found this after the fact. This woman is, is claiming to be the sister of of this person. And to be fair, they look pretty similar. They look enough like sisters where I, I'd believe that. It's from Taylor's TikTok 2.0. The fact that this has happened and that she's so busy that she had to recently shut down her website due to the high demands makes me ill, spread awareness and support my soon to launch ma, another word, coquette, <laughs> coquette. I don't know. It's also MC, so I can't use that abbreviation anymore. Whatever, let's watch a sister's video. Story time about how my sister stole my brand vision and ran forward with the company and left me in the dust. Maybe many of you have seen it lately on TikTok. It's called Ma Corsetier. Ma Corsetier. I feel like I did a pretty good job when I said it. Let's replay that. Ma Corsetier. Ma Corsetier. Yeah, I didn't see the replay, but you did. And we all agree that I did a good job. Four, maybe four and a half, five years ago, my sister and I sat together. We were like, hmm, what can we do? I said, why don't we start doing lingerie and sleepwear, blah, 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 blah. She said, I was thinking the same thing. Something clicked. Long story short, that's when the brand Mako Cat was brought to life. And here it is. That's why Mako Cat here might sound so similar because... Mako Cat. So this is Mako Cat, which I think I did say as well. Mako Cat. <laughs> I think I did a good job with that one too. Here it is and all her glory. Does that look familiar, sis? It should because there's over 1,400 designs. I've designed 1,400 plus designs, spent dollar, 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 traveled and met with mentors and multiple investors, self-taught skills, trades and business knowledge for years to prepare for this brand. This is like a whole thing of its own. This is crazy.
This is crazy shit, man. This is a long video, so we're only gonna watch some key points. Uh, you could check out the whole thing if you want. She said, can I please start a mini business? And I said, sure, what were you thinking? She said, well, we need to start making social medias anyway for my coquette. So what happens if I just sell plain corsets, just plain corsets with the style, either sweetheart, scoop neck, straight, you know, whatever. I know everything about all those styles that were just mentioned. I know everything, I'm just not gonna get into it because I choose not to intimidate my viewers with my knowledge. Ma corsetière was meant to be temporary, to grow the socials used to launch Ma Coquette. She sold the corsets, so she kept 100% of the profits made to pay her bills. Not only hopefully make a living by making some money and paying my bills, but the people that will follow will already like what we post and when we launch Ma Coquette. We need to choose a name that sounds exactly the same and looks the same so that when we transition from what it was, which we ended up choosing Ma Cosetier to Ma Coquette, no one's really gonna notice. This is crazy. The Ma Coquette to my conservatier, to my curs to my corsetier drama. We got in a fight, as sisters do. Was this a bigger one than usual? Sure. Two years is a bit extreme for something that we'd been arguing about. Uh I sometimes argue with my brother. I have a whole bunch of brothers, but I sometimes argue with the one that edits this video, because I'll be like, you put way too many fart <laughs> sound effects in this video. And he'll be like, how about you shut the fuck up? We already both did own together a glassware company. It's called Rich and Thirsty. And she said, you know what? I don't want any part of this anymore. I don't want anything to do with you. I'm out, I'm done. She left Rich and Thirsty. She, f she walked out the goddamn door. She was like, I'm not thirsty for rich and thirsty no more. Her sister, that is. The other person that sort of looks uh, like this. All of a sudden, I keep getting sent to me from friends and family. Oh, you launched my coquette. Wait, what are you talking about? No, I didn't. It's because she never stopped selling and producing things for Marco Satier. So she dumped everything else on me and she continued Marco Satier on her own when she's never had any interest in fashion before I brought up this design. So yeah, she went to, she did the thing on her own. All right, <laughs> people get real heated about this sort of stuff over on TikTok. And then I have people I know in real life tell me about it because they know I have this channel. And then I'm like, wow, this is crazy stuff. Thank you for sending it to me. Please subscribe right now so one day I can afford my own uh, wedding dress, please. <laughs>